Good morning. This is the time we have posted and the location for our 10 o'clock regular Board of Supervisors meeting. And it is Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024 at 10 a.m. Board of Supervisors Hearing Room, 1415 Melody Lane Building, G, Bisbee, Arizona, 85603. Pursuant to ARS 38-431.02H, the public will have that physical access to the meeting place 15 minutes prior to the start of the meeting. Any item on this agenda is open for discussion and possible action. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chair is not cooperating. <laughs> this chair will cooperate, but that chair wasn't. Okay. So the order or deletion of any item on this agenda is subject to modification at the meeting. The board may vote to recess into an executive session for the purpose of obtaining legal advice from the board's attorney on any matter listed on the agenda pursuant to ARS 38-431.03A and 3. We will begin with the roll call. District 1. Crosby, sir. District 2. Supervisor English is present. And I am here representing District 3. Peggy Judd. Members of the public may attend this meeting via Microsoft Teams, computer or mobile app, or via phone by calling 602-609-7513 or 888-680-6714. Conference ID 746-1781-POUND. If you have trouble accessing this meeting remotely, call 520-432-9200 for direction. The board may permit public comment during the discussion of any item on this agenda. To speak on an agenda item or during the call to the public, complete and return the speaker request form to the clerk of the board prior to the start of the meeting. Note that some attachments may be updated after the agenda is published. This means that some presentation material displayed at the board meeting may differ slightly from the attached version. And we do have people who have signed up to speak for call to the public today. The first is Paul R. Varble. Thank you. Please approach the microphone and everyone who speaks, state your name and your address for the record. Thank you. Sierra Vista. Ann and Peggy, you broke the law. Rescind your vote. The board acted in violation of statute, state statute, when it voted for the 18 voting centers. Ann and Peggy, you broke the law. Rescind your vote. On September 12th, the board voted on Resolution 2324, citing ARS 16411. That was not approved, which resulted to approve redesignating the 55 precinct uh, polling places previously used in our county. Ann and Peggy, you broke the law. Rescind your vote. According to ARS 16411A, the decision on the number of voting locations had to have been made by October 1st. So the vote on December 12th is clearly in violation of the state statute. We the people are taking our country back from this treasonous, tyrannical government. Tactical civics teaches all American citizens how to do this. It starts with we the people, then the grand juries, then the militias who can enforce the laws to restore our constitutional republic and puts all our servants back in their place or prison or grave. We will have election integrity, for without it there will be election interference and fraud. We will have paper ballots. One day, one vote with voter, picture, ID, and proof of American citizenship. Mm -hmm. No mail-in ballots and absolutely no machines of any kind. And we will remove any politician, government official, or enforcement agencies that violate their oath of office, vetoes election integrity, or commits treason, like opening our borders. And if you don't like that, resign or pack your bags and leave the country. There is no room for you here. This is America, and it's for American citizens. God bless America, our citizens, and God bless Donald Trump. Thank you. Our next speaker is Radford Hyde. He says he's on Teams. So. Good morning. 
Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Good. My, my name is Radford Hyde from Sierra Vista. I've been in IT and cybersecurity for over 30 years. I hold a CISSP, Certified Ethical Hacker, GX Certified Penetration Tester, and several other professional certifications. There were several gigantic takeaways from the ESNS demo at Cochise College last week. Senior VP and Chief Information Security Officer of ESNS, Chris Wallachin, admitted to me that the accreditation of the lab that certified ESNS 6.0.4.0 system used in Cochise County had lapsed before the 2022 election. I believe the ARS supersedes the USEAC in these circumstances and it requires the system to be recertified by a lab with an actual valid accreditation whether the EAC requires it or not. Also, despite all of the information provided by the vendor so that there was no network connectivity, a lie repeated Mockingbird media style over and over again by the vendors, the politicians, and the media, he admitted that their express poll tablets, which are part of their system no matter what doublespeak or odd semantics he uses, are definitely network connected via Wi-Fi and internet connected through the use of a cellular data internet router, MiFi. It was interesting to note that they skipped right over the internet connectivity part while explaining how the system works when they declared that none of their systems are network connected. And they were rightly called out on the lie by several attendees in the audience, including me. They made the asinine claim that the ExpressPoll tablets aren't really part of their system and thus basically are irrelevant to the discussion. He even admitted that the database of who voted and who has not yet voted is updated between the machines and between the voting centers very often. And the database also updates at the state level several times per hour during the election. Third, he even admitted that the latest version that their testing was successfully test hacked and they will be releasing a report on this hack in several weeks. The story is more from, one, no internet connectivity. Well, they have internet communication, but it's secure. Well, actually, they do connect to the internet, but it's secure, to four, it's good that there's internet connectivity. Why all the hiding from the truth from the beginning? There is always this tiptoeing around the facts, beating around the bush, and corporate explaining of probable law breaking, and passing the buck hoping people will just go along with it. This denial of facts and the truth is almost unbelievable to behold. Get rid of these machines now. Thank you to Supervisor Crosby for courageously sticking up for truth and trying to end the charade. Also, elect Supervisor Crosby as chair. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Allison Morse. She's also on Teams. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Oh, great. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning. My name is Allison Morse. I'm from Portal, and I thank you for this opportunity to speak today. I'd, <clears throat> excuse me. I'd also like to thank County Administrator Rich Karwachka, Election, election Director Tim Maddox and Cochise County Community College for hosting the two recent demos on ESNS election equipment. The presentations were professionally executed and well attended. I look forward to the video being posted on the county's election webpage. I was happy to see that Supervisor Ann English was in attendance, but was disappointed that Supervisors Tom Crosby and Peggy Judd were not to be seen. Both have expressed concern with our thoroughly tested and certified machines. These same supervisors are now under indictment felling, facing felony charges for their unwillingness to certify the results of our elections. I've already spoken about my efforts to obtain information from various county departments. I've submitted numerous public record requests that are neither very extensive nor complicated. Most are six to eight months old. Unfortunately, I don't have the time or resources to file lawsuits in an effort to get that information. The county was sued last year, however, by the Arizona Center for Investigation for withholding basic information from the Sheriff's Department. More recently, the organization American Oversight has filed a lawsuit in order to obtain election-related information. I urge the county to cooperate in an expedient manner because two of those named in the lawsuit, Supervisor Tom Crosby and Recorder David Stevens, are running for re-election. Voters have a right to know about candidates on the ballot 
and who is worthy of their support. If workload is a problem, perhaps the county should consider spending money on hiring another staff person to handle public records requests rather than on settlements of unnecessary lawsuits. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Kara Harris, and she is on Teams. Good morning, supervisors. Good morning, I am Kara. Kara. I'm a Kara Harris, a resident of Whetstone, a native by birth, and a taxpayer, and your employer, as we the people, are who the Constitution has empowered to govern. Please understand this, as I'm growing weary of reminding you all of this fact. The issue is your violation of your oath of office. At the last board meeting, Ms. Olmstead reminded all of you of your violation of the ARS statutes. I will not repeat what she said as this is on the record. Ms. Judge, you violated the law when you put the voting centers back on the agenda and re-voted. This vote was illegal in violation of your oath of office. You can't just change your mind willy-nilly and do whatever you please. I want to thank all of you for forcing me to revisit my constitutional rights and your limits. You have challenged me to relearn my rights by seeing your violations repeatedly. I have personally heard Supervisor Crosby advise you both of these violations only to see you persist in doing so. And since I won't digress here, I will only state, number one, Radford, who just spoke, is an experienced person. I am not. What I want as Jane Q citizen is paper ballots, precinct voting, and no machines. I have worked the polls since pre-Obama, and what we did before works. We can't be hacked. The machines can, and Radford expressed that before I got on this speaking platform. The machines have proven hackable, hackable by people like him that are far smarter than me. He's warning you. We are facing many citizens who know their votes were stolen, so you better watch out because if it happens again, people are going to react for their constitutional rights. Choose to do the right thing. Follow the laws as we must as citizens, and you as servants to those citizens should be complying with at these meetings. I sure hope you fixed Mr. Kern's road. Thank you and have a good day. And Tom for supervisor the the chairman of the board. Thank you. Our next speaker is Nancy Olmstead. She is also on Teams. Good morning. My name is Nancy Olmstead. I live in Whetstone, and I thank you for this opportunity, and special thanks to those coordinating teams. The other day I heard a presentation by Hillsdale College titled, Do We Have a Constitution Anymore? In summary, the speaker defined our Constitution in its broader meaning, that is, establishing a Republican form of government and laws to provide protection and liberty. The speaker went on to say, I can't prove that we don't have a Constitution anymore, but it's definitely sick. Case in point, my comments to this board at the last meeting when I spoke of the board's clear violation regarding the number of voting locations for 2024. Citing Article 7, Section 12 of the Arizona Constitution, quote, there shall be enacted registration and other laws to secure the purity of elections and guard against abuses of the elective franchise, unquote. Black's Law Dictionary defines elective franchise as, quote, the right of voting at public elections the privilege of qualified voters to cast their ballots for the candidates they favor at elections, authorized by law. Let me repeat, authorized by law. Your vote no on September 12th automatically determined that our county would revert back to 55 voting locations. In contrast, your vote on December 12th violates ARS 16411A. As such, you are dishonoring our Constitution, and more importantly, your oath. And yet, we're admonished because we don't trust our election process. Why should we? You broke the law. Last week, the, elect, the county spent resources on a snazzy presentation, trying to convince us that our elections are safe and secure. That did not resolve our trust, our distrust. 
To manage our elections with machines against the will of the people, we must conform to your definition of elective fran franchise. But no, we're not going to conform, especially since it's you who have de le demonstrated lack of principle. This is simple. You can fix this. Intentional or unintentional, you can restore election integrity by upholding your September 12th vote as required by our election laws and revert back to 55 voting locations. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Trisha Gerardetti and she is on Teams. Yes, good morning, supervisors. This is Trisha Gerardet. I live in Sierra Vista. Along with many people we've heard from, I went to the ES and S demonstration as well. Um, it was very helpful to me since I have voted by mail for many years. And so I hadn't seen a lot of this equipment. Um, I went through a test run of checking in with the poll tablet, which um, then gave me a ballot card that I went over to a voting machine um, to cast my vote in this uh, fake fake test race. Um, overall, I found it extremely interesting and enlightening. I could, um, once I inserted that card that I was given that had determined where I lived and what I could vote on in a real election, I put that card into the voting machine. Then I had choices presented to me on the touch screen. Um, I could tell that if I was uh, skeptical about the machine uh, properly recording my vote, that then when I said I was done and um, done with the touch screen and printed the card again, I would want to stand there and confirm that the card indeed recorded my yeses or my noes or my selections for a candidate. So that would take some time, but that would be my last opportunity to check that what I had in my hand matched what I had intended to vote. But um, for those who don't trust voting by mail, I guess I would point out that we get a paper ballot. And so I then get to sit at home and make sure that the circles I want to be filled in are the ones that I filled in, that I didn't have to double check on this machine. And then I seal my ballot and I put it in a Dropbox rather than US mail, save a little bit of money. And so I feel quite secure with the way the system runs now with vote by mail. And so do 80% of the people in Arizona. They use vote by mail. So I think we're on a good path. And um, I have enough faith that I need in those machines. Machines are less uh, likely to make mistakes than humans. Thank you, Trisha. The time is up. Um, our next speaker is Shanna Herrera. She is here in person. Good morning, Shanna Herrera. I live in Hereford. Um, I got to say I'm, I'm disappointed in the vote when you guys voted um, against the uh, precinct voting and voted for the centers. Um, the dual votes, the dates, the timing, not, none of that withstanding. You had the opportunity to, to change one thing without getting any slack or slack from the state, and you chose not to do it. I, that's very disappointing. That's all I have to say. Oh, I nominate Tom Crosby for chair. Thank you. Our next speaker is Sandy Troll. Hello, Sandy Troll from Sierra Vista. Um, I have two topics. First one is stop the lithium mining in Cochise County, Arizona. I have not seen the environmental impact statement, if there even is one, 
The toxins released are detrimental to the health and welfare of every living creature in our county, and every person involved in allowing this to occur needs to be immediately removed from office. Stop the drilling now. Cochise County Board of Supervisors, do your jobs and stop this crap. I'm talking to you, Ann English, and Peggy Judd. It seems that Tom Crosby is the only one on the board that believes in the Constitution and adheres to his oath of office and election integrity. He would vote to stop this crap, and you two need to support him. We will not get any help from Katie Hobbs, who vetoed election integrity and has committed election interference. Carrie Lake would put a stop to this drilling if she were in her rightful position as the governor. We, the people, demand you to stop the lithium mining. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about, the elections. I want to speak out against the unlawful second vote in December that set up 18 vote centers in Cochise County for the 2024 elections. The deadline, according to ARS 16411A, to declare precincts or vote centers was October 1st. The Board of Supervisors already voted to use 55 precincts in September when you did not approve the 17 vote centers. The Board acted in violation of state statute. We must go back to 55 precincts because we're going to paper ballots, in-person voting, one day only with no machines counted at the precinct level. And one thing I did get from the ESNS presentation is that these machines are so secure, nobody can even look at those ballots. So that tells you everything you need to know right there. Um, our elections are unconstitutional. Third-party corporations are running our elections, not we the people. Ballot counting is not to be done in secret. It is to be done in public. The board needs to return to precinct-based voting, remove third-party technology, ban the machines, tabulators, and e-poll books. And I have a quote. True faith is keeping your eyes on God when the world around you is falling apart. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our next speaker is Wavon Mayer. Wavon Mayer. Good morning. Yes, I'm Yvonne Mayer, and I live in Hereford. And today, along with many other voters, I'm speaking in opposition to the actions the board took on December 12th and January 9th. In review, on September 12th, 2023, the board failed to approve action item 15, approval of 17 vote centers. The stated impact of not improving was to designate 15 polling places. Both supervisors Judd and Crosby voted against the resolution. And this action fell within the October 1st deadline specified in ARS 16411A. End of story. Oh, but wait, there's more. On December 12th, the amended agenda attempted again to approve the vote centers. This time, an additional vote center was added in Peggy Judd's district. Surprising no one, this time Peggy Judd voted for the vote centers. The item was passed two to one with Supervisor Crosby opposed. Let me remind you, this action came after the deadline set by statute, October 1st. And again, on January 9th, the Board of Supervisors discussed spending an additional $50,000 for vote center equipment. Constituent Nancy Olmsted advised that the December 12th action approving vote centers was against Arizona statute and additional funding for vote centers should not be approved. Did the board question possible or probable violation of ARS statute? Did someone say, let's get legal advice. Let's table this until we're clear on the statute. Only Supervisor Crosby agreed that Mrs. Olmsted was correct and voted against funding approval. Do supervisors Judd and English not understand the law, or do they not care? We the people hold the board accountable and demand you rescind the illegal December 12th approval of vote centers. Thank you. Our next speaker is Kim DePew.
Good morning. My name is Kim DePew. I live in Sierra Vista, Arizona. District 1, here we are again, asking you why. Why did you reverse your own vote to use precinct voting? The September vote was by law. You unlawfully reversed your good decision in December, blatantly violating the October 1st deadline in Arizona statutes. United States Republicanism is all but lost to us. We rejoiced at the tiny scrap of self-governance you tossed us in September. Smaller precinct vote tallies put together by our trusted neighbors and friends would have smoothed out much of the vote fraud anxiety. But here we are again asking you why and wondering how on earth the county attorney didn't advise you against the illegal December vote center decision. Thank you for the time to speak. Please, ladies, give Mr. Crosby a chance to lead the board. Our, our next speaker is Jean Grief or Henry S. Conroy. Sorry. My name is Henry Conroy, and I'm from Sierra Vista. Again, as is everybody else, is asking the same question. We, the people, would like to know why you have flagrantly violated ARS 16.411. It states the Board of Supervisors of each county on or before October 1st of each year preceding the year of the general election by an order shall establish a convenient number of election precincts in the county and define the boundaries of the precincts as follows. The election precinct boundary shall be established so that to, to be included within election districts prescribed by law for elected officers of the state and its political subdivisions, including community college district precincts, except those elected officers provided for in Titles 30 and 48. If after October 1 of the preceding year, the general election, the Board of Supervisors must further adjust precinct boundaries, just the boundaries, to the redistricting of election districts as prescribed by law, and to comply with this subsection, the Board of Supervisors shall adjust those precinct boundaries. On October 12th, the Cochise County Board of Supervisors approved precinct voting centers, which is after the 1st of October. There are 55 precinct polling places in Cochise County, and each of them is required to have at least one voting center. The statute does not allow you to change from voting precincts to voting centers. It only allows you to establish the precinct boundaries and to designate at least one polling place for each precinct. The Board of Supervisors approved the 55 precinct polling centers on September 12th before the 1 October deadline, number 15 on your agenda. And then the Board attempted to change to 18 voting centers, which included the additional one in Ms. Judd's area, on December 19th. This is illegal. It is totally a contravention of the state law. And we, the people, want you to countermand your vote on December 19th and revert to the original and legal decision. You made a legal decision, then you broke it. And we want to know why you think that you're above the law and can break the statutes or not, or not abide by them. As far as uh, the voting um, machines, I am also a computer programmer, and it's very easy to jerry-rig those systems with different algorithms. And uh, unless you've got somebody that's totally independent to evaluate the software that's in them, they're, they're not trustworthy. So I also am against the voting machines. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jean Gafrida. Gafrida. She's on Teams. Jean. Good morning. I'm Jean Gafrida from Herford, Arizona. And I, too, just wanted to remind the board that you on September 12th voted against the voting centers and in favor of the precinct polling places. Anything else that you've done after that is illegitimate, and I would like you to go back and revert to the precinct, the 55 precinct polling places to be established and defined as you were supposed to do by October 1st. If we don't have to, if you don't have to follow laws. Why have laws at all? Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. That concludes all the calls to the public. Our next item on the agenda is consent items one through seven. 
Madam Chair, I move that we approve consent agenda items one through seven. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The chair votes aye and the motion carries unanimously. Item number eight is the next item. We could have a motion. Uh, Madam Chair, I move we approve Series 13 Farm Winery New Liquor License Application submitted by Alexander C. King for Cactus Crew located at 10350 East Sunrise Drive, Pierce, Arizona, 85625. I'll second the motion. We have a presentation by Laura Lowenheim, Deputy Clerk of the Board. Madam Chair, members of the board, this is a new Series 13 in-state farm winery liquor license application submitted for Cactus Crew at 10350 East Sunrise Drive in Pierce, 85625. Uh, the application has been reviewed and recommended for approval by the appropriate departments. Property taxes for the parcel are current. The notice and application were posted as required by state law, and no formal protests were received. The applicant has paid the $100 processing fee, and board staff is recommending approval. Okay. Are there any questions? Open the public hearing. Oh, I'm going to open the public hearing. Okay, this is a public hearing. We have an opportunity for anyone who is hearing us today to speak up and comment on this liquor license application. Hearing no speakers, I will close the public hearing and call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 The chair votes aye and the motion carries unanimously. The next item is item number nine. Um, I I need to prob should I talk first? <laughs> I just want to say this this agenda item is important to me. It almost um almost hurts me to have to leave as chairman. Um, I intend full well, living as far away as I do, I do a lot of my work at home anyway. I intend full well to be at all the meetings and participating quite actively um, on the computer switch thanks to our wonderful team we were able to develop the best I think we have the best system I've been watching a lot of meetings in other counties and I think we have the best system in Cochise County so to, to do work at home and our people call in to call to the public and they they are heard and it's a, just a great thing so I feel like I do that um, personal things are going on at my house that I have a extreme need to be there um, I'm going to go ahead and make the nomination, and I have many reasons to do this. I've I've been weighing the options, and I feel that I want to elect Ann English as chairman of the Board of Supervisors, effective with the February 6, 2024 regular Board of Supervisors meeting. And I, without getting personal, I can't really explain why, except for that she has had lots of experience, and she has held her decorum and her, her wonderful um, acceptance of the many, many things that have happened in this boardroom, and I am grateful for that. And I feel that's just the, the easiest, most natural way for us to end this session. So, um, session as if we we're the legislature. So I did make that motion, elect an English as chairman of the Board of Supervisors effective February 6, 2024 regular Board of Supervisors meeting. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Would anyone like to make comments besides me? Okay. I do have people that have signed in on this. So we've had a chance for our board to make comments. I have 12 people that signed in in support of Ann and zero that signed in opposed. And I do have people speaking on this item um, in support of Ann English as chair. I don't know if the other ones are in support, but this one is in support. Her, this is Allison Morse. You are on Teams. Allison, do you hear me? Uh, yes. Can you hear there me you okay? Yes. Thank you. Um, good morning again. My, my name is Allison Moore from Portal, and I, again, thank you for this opportunity to express my concerns. Under the circumstances, it is completely understandable that Supervisor Judd would want to step down from her duties as chair. I do want to thank you, Chairperson Judd, for your service, and again, let you know that you are in my thoughts during this difficult time. 
Supervisor English is an exemplary elected official. She has served on the board for 23 years, and many of those years she served in the role of chair. Despite pressure from other members of the board and some county voters, Supervisor English steadfastly upheld the law and heeded the advice of the Secretary of State and County Attorney to not engage in a 100% hand count of ballots or the refusal to certify our election results. The misguided decisions of the other two supervisors have unfortunately resulted in their indictment of felony charges. Ms. English is the only supervisor who is not under felony indictment, nor does she have any open meeting law complaints filed against her. Supervisor Crosby has multiple complaints on file with the Attorney General's office. What is most disturbing is that Mr. Crosby has not acknowledged any fault or wrongdoing. On several occasions, he has blatantly ignored counsel from the county attorney and expressed contempt for her keeping him in line. This is not the kind of leader Cochise County citizens want to run their meetings. Supervisor English brings a wealth of knowledge and experience to the position of chair. She will handle the position with grace, honor, and dignity while restoring credibility to our Board of Supervisors. Thank you. Thank you, Ellison. Our next speaker is Jeff Sturgis. Hi, and good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm Jeff Sturgis from Sierra Vista. I am sorry to learn of Supervisor Peggy Judd's husband's deteriorating medical condition, who now, as reported by the Herald Review, requires round-the-clock care. It must be very painful and difficult for Peggy and the whole family. I have experienced two family members in similar situations. I understand that she cannot fulfill the extra duties of the Board of Supervisors chairperson any longer. Um, I'm glad that Peggy has nominated Ann English to assume her role as chairperson. And I urge Ann English to accept the nomination. And I urge all three county supervisors to vote for Ann English to become what the agenda wording describes, and as I quote, Chairman of the Board of Supervisors. Ann English has long experience in performing the duties of a Cochise County Supervisor and has over two years experience in fulfilling the duties of chairperson. Ann English has the exp expertise, integrity, and overall competence to chair meetings and perform all other extra duties of board chairperson. One very important obvious reason to elect Ann English as chair of the Board of Supervisors is this. Ann, is, Ann English is the only Cochise County Supervisor not being prosecuted on felony charges for engaging in election interference and criminal conspiracy. Ann follows state and federal laws, respects Cochise County Attorney's General's, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Cochise County Attorney's Council and has no open meeting law complaints, unlike another one of our county supervisors, Tom Crosby, who has many. Cochise County citizens have witnessed Tom Crosby's outbursts and refusal to adhere to the decorum and legal requirements demanded of his position. And English has consistently stood up for the rule of law and our democratic processes with the dignity, integrity, and courtesy we should expect in elected leaders. To elect the other supervisor, Tom Crosby, should be unthinkable. Tom Crosby is scheduled to go to soon to go on trial for felony charges, has cost taxpayers in this county vast amounts of money, brought international notoriety to our county for attempting to disenfranchise the votes of county citizens, has rudely interrupted and insulted other county officials during meetings. He has violated open meeting laws and has brought seemingly endless chaos to our county government. He should never be considered for anything but dismissal from his current position, certainly not given more leadership risk responsibilities. We need a stable, honest, law-abiding chairperson with proven expertise and integrity to help guide and represent Cochise County. That person That's all is the angry. time. Jeff, I'm Jeff, you're, you're out of time. Thank you um, for understanding. The next speaker is Trisha Jaredet. She's also on Teams. Yes, good morning again, supervisors. <clears throat> Trisha Jaredet in Sierra Vista. Um, I echo similar comments we've heard. I appreciate the 
um, thoughtfulness that uh, Supervisor Judd has surely put into her nomination. And I agree with your comments that uh, Supervisor English has conducted herself well with all the chaos we've had recently. And um, I will urge Supervisor Cosby to vote in favor of having Supervisor English be chairman of the board. I hope you will do that. Um, I have a question for all the supervisors. I don't know if you can or will answer. Um, later on this year, when our elections director will present the board with results of various elections, and the director certifies that those results are accurate. Will you pledge now to accept and certify those results if the director certifies they are accurate? Thank you. Thank you, Trisha. The next speaker is Sandy Troll. She's here. Uh, Sandy Troll from Sierra Vista. Uh, I didn't really prepare a lot to say because I didn't even know to put oppose or support because it was not a person's name in that blank. And I'm surprised that it's in English. Um, my quote was going to say, I'm in support of Tom Grosby to be elected as chairman of the board. And I just thought you guys rotated around and it's and English has been chairman previously. Um, I'm just totally floored at the fact that, Peggy, you would say you're conservative constitutionalist and you wouldn't support someone who supports the Constitution. Nobody in Cochise County wants open borders. Nobody wants voter interference. I mean, no, nobody wants, everyone wants school choice. Everyone here wants the Oh, okay. Anyway, I, I'm just rambling now. So anyway, I'm just very disappointed. Thank you. Yeah. Our next speaker is Joseph Patterson. Good morning. Joseph Patterson, Sierra Vista, Arizona. And... <clears throat> I'm not being paid to be here like some people are. I would like to thank Peggy for initiating the uh, <clears throat> the effort to restore election integrity. Uh, <clears throat> originally, this whole thing started because all the people, all we the people asked for was, let us go ahead and run your election. Just let us audit, hand count audit the results to make sure everything is okay. That's all we asked for. That's all we asked for. Just let us hand count, make sure everything's okay. That's all we wanted. And look at what has happened. I want to applaud you. I want to thank you for making the effort. No one else would, but you did make the effort initially to restore election integrity so that we can trust our votes. That's all we asked for. We just wanted to trust our votes. Since that time, since I've become involved, and that's the only reason I really did get involved in all of this, was because of the election. <clears throat> During this time, I found that uh, Supervisor Crosby um, has been very open and receptive and, in my opinion, is, is a fine man of integrity. He really does love the Constitution. He puts the Constitution above everything, because if we lose it, we've lost our freedom, and we're losing it now. But I think Tom, Mr. Crosby, is the right person for this time. 
with all the headwinds that are opposing our efforts just to just to make sure the results are accurate. That's all we want. I think I I uh, honestly believe he is the man for the time. He has the courage, he has the wisdom, he has the brains, the fortitude to do what needs to be done. And then uh, if uh, if the board uh, follows his lead, I think we are in for strong headwinds, but I think we're in for integrity with our elections. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Tamara Arberch. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Board of Supervisors and all those in attendance for allowing me to speak today. My name is Tamara Birch. I live in Bisbee, Arizona, and I've been a proud voter for 43 years, never missed an election. Thank you um, to have this action item number nine on the agenda today. I strongly support your vote to accept Ann English as our next chairperson of the Cochise County Board of Supervisors. She has shown her leadership and has carried out her responsibilities of this elected position with honor, honesty, and objectivity as chairperson and board member previously and currently. She is experienced, informed, and a vital member of this organization. I trust her diligence to apply her accumulated skills and to follow state laws, statutes, and procedures to maintain civility and justice and economic stability in our county. As a former teacher, I know she has done her homework and is diligent in all of her preparations for all agenda items. Her years of being a qualified public servant and elected official have been a benefit to all of her and our constituents. She has always been professional and timely in responding to my questions and concerns. I appreciate that quality deeply. I can understand and relate to Supervisor Judd's need to caretake of her husband as her priority. I've gone through that, and I know Anne is also going through something not as serious but important. May we find, may Miss Judd find uh, solace to deal with her challenges in a loving constant way. It's a hard job. I respectfully request your approval of Ann English as the returning chairperson of the Cochise County Board of Supervisors. Uh, thank you. And concerning um, Ann, she's gone through many election processes and cycles, and I have also been a poll worker and a poll observer. And uh, the machines, the only thing that's connected to the to the uh, internet is the poll book, and that has nothing to do with her ballots. I believe in our integrity. I believe in our constitutional system. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Joy Banks. She's on Teams. Yes. Good Joy. morning. Can you can you hear me? Good morning. Yes. Oh yes. Uh, Miss Judd, I'm so sorry that you're going through this this trial at this time of your life and uh, I too have had uh, family members on hospice care and and it's a long and grueling process that that uh, can take many years to overcome if if your spouse should pass soon so my condolences to you on this and I'm very grateful that you can continue on as as a supervisor at this time considering that we have five elections coming up this year, important elections, as they all are. I do support your recommendation, Ms. Judd, for Ann English as chair, and I'm very glad that you uh, recognize her service to the county and to us as people in the county and voting members of the county. And I do approve Ann uh, as being chair as she is not under indictment for interfering with any elections that I know of and that uh, I'm, I'm very pleased that she's going to make sure that all election proceedings make it to the appropriate agendas for the appropriate actions, as the chair's position does set the agenda. And 
If necessary, she will once again stand firm against attempts by her fellow supervisors to delay or subvert the certification of our votes. And that, that was exceedingly painful, Ms. Judd, Mr. Crosby, when that occurred in November of 2022. Uh, I was absolutely shocked that you would not certify the 40,000 votes of our county and put, uh, put the entire state's certified results into jeopardy. And for that, I, I do, it hurts so deeply that I, I just cannot get over that. And those that prefer hand counting, I wish you would look at the statistics on how inaccurate 100% hand counts are, especially with so many things on the ballot these days. All right, thank you. Thank you. That concludes our people who have asked to speak on this on this agenda item. Um, I, if, if there's no other discussion, I have one comment. Okay, and that is please. that I will be opposing this appointment because of the severe mistakes made by Madam English and yourself, Madam Judge. I will accept that comment. Um, so, uh, at this point, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, say aye. And I will vote aye um, for the pure fact that we we need to maintain decorum in this chamber, and we will, and I think this is the best choice for that. So I vote aye. Is any opposed? No. Okay. We have two in favor, and the motion carries. The next item is number 10. We'll need a motion for that item. <clears throat> Madam Chair, I move that we adopt Resolution 2402 authorizing Cochise County to apply for a grant from the Arizona Department of Housing State Housing Trust Fund to fund emergency housing repairs for income qualified Cochise County residents, excluding residents in the incorporated areas of Sierra Vista and Douglas. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Susan Bronson is our planner in the county and she's going to explain this to us. Yes, good morning everyone. You are here, excuse me, we are here today to ask your authority for the development services Get department. Get a little closer to Okay, the excuse me. Um, we're here to ask your authority to apply for this grant. Uh, we're required to ask your authority in advance by the Arizona Department of Housing. This is a different grant from our CDBG grant that also does housing repair. Um, it's a little more streamlined process and it would supplement our funding through the CDBG uh, grant. This is also administered by Arizona Department of Housing. It is a, a state grant. It is for emergency home repair only. If it were not an emergency, we would not be able to use funds under this grant, but we would be able to use funds under the CDBG grant. The grant is competitive. It's a $250,000 grant. We're proposing to apply for $200,000 under this grant. And there are a number of scoring criteria uh, that the state um, is using to to assess these grants. We feel that we're, we have um, strong criteria that we can meet. Uh, it also favors rural projects. Of course, uh, we're a rural county. So although it is competitive, we feel that um, we can submit a, a competitive, excuse me, competitive application and we're here to ask your authority to do so. So any other questions or concerns from the board? You know, um, I, I'm always glad when we do something that's a little more streamlined because in the past there's been so many criteria that caused people who really needed to have home repairs not to be able to get them. And I noticed that they don't have in here about the uh, so many things that have been in the past. So I'm hoping that we get this grant in order to be able to move things a little faster for these people. Th thank you. Yes, yeah, thank there's you. no NEPA required um, and it's a streamlined bidding process. Thank you for your efforts in organizing this. and and preparing it for us. Okay, hearing no other comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 The chair votes aye and the motion carries unanimously. Thank um, you. And stay there because you are our presenter for the next item. Okay, next item. Item 11. Madam Chair, I move we adopt Resolution 24-03 authorizing the adoption of State Housing Trust Fund Owner Occupied Emergency Repaired Housing Guidelines. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion in a second. If you could give us a presentation on that portion. Yes, thank you. As part of this grant application, we are required to include State Housing Trust Fund housing guidelines. Um, and these are the guidelines that we are requesting your 
approval of. Um, they just reflect the changes, the differences between the CDBG grant. You previously did adopt housing guidelines for the CDBG grant. These are very similar, but we tailored them to the State Housing uh, Trust Fund grant. Uh, a couple differences are that this grant can be used in the floodplain. However, floodplain insurance is required by the homeowner. Um, in addition, it must be an emergency repair versus our CDBG grant, which does not have to be an emergency repaired. So we had to slightly uh, adjust the, the guidelines, but by and large, they're very, very similar to the guidelines you previously adopted. But they still have to be owner, they, you have to own it and occupy the residence. Yes, that is correct. With this grant, however, it doesn't have a 12-month requirement that the homeowner lived in the house 12 months preceding the application. Well, is that all? Does anyone else have? Thank you for your presentation, Ms. Yeah. Bronson. Thank you. And I'm um, hearing no more comments. All those in favor say aye. 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 The chair votes aye and the motion carries unanimously. Our next presentation, it, or our next motion, item number 12, if we could have a, a motion for that. Uh, Madam Chair, I move that we approve the State of Arizona Mutual Aid Compact, AVMIC, which enables participants to share resources during emergencies, effective through December 31st, 2033. All right. We have a motion second. Second. Okay. Daniel Deshawn, he's our Emergency Management Director, and he will present this item. Good morning. Thank you for having me, Chairwoman, members of the board. This agreement is the Arizona Mutual Aid Compact from the State of Arizona Department of Emergency and Military Affairs. Uh, the goal of the compact or the agreement is to identify parties and resources uh, to be used during an emergency and also identify the mechanisms for reimbursement beforehand. Uh, it also lays out the ground rules for when we share or request resources, such as we'll follow the National Incident Management System, uh, such as uh, what you might hear, the Incident Command System. Uh, it also establishes interoperability rules and uh, resource typing. So if you uh, an organization asks for something, they get what they need specifically. Uh, and it also does have caveats where there is no obligation. So if an organization, a city or a county, doesn't have the resources to send, uh, they're not uh, held liable for not sending something. Well, are there any questions? No, just a, a, a comment. I, I know when we had the, the big fire around Sierra Vista, um, we learned a lot that we should have um, put in place ahead of time. It was kind of learn as you go on that. and. Um, the mutual aid compact now, I, I think probably yearly, you know, the the uh, public works is contacted about what they could contribute, you know, whether we're going to need graders or what, et cetera. So I think it's a good planning tool. So that's all I'm going to say is that um, I'm glad the state has a contract so that we can put it together so that all the guidelines are there. Yeah, and I, I think it's specifically important that we aren't, demanded that we give the money if we cannot. Um, so many things are put upon us through, at the state level, and, and it's good that they recognize that some people, you know, have the resources and some do not. Um, maybe because we've had all uh, our own emergencies and used them up. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Well, thank you. Um, if there's any further comments? No further comments. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 And the chair votes aye, and the motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Deshaun. Thank you. Um, so our next is under the item of facilities. Our, can we have the next motion, please? 13. Madam Chair, I move we approve contract 23-01-FAC-01 with AWR construction for the construction of facilities, maintenance building in the amount of $2,753,551.55 to approve proposal with KENG for utility trenching in the amount of $123,598 at parcel 102-30-114W1, or excuse me, 1228 Hereford Road, Bisbee, Arizona 85603, effective January 23rd, 2024. I'll second the motion. Okay. That was a lot. <laughs> so you have your job cut out for us Good. giving this presentation. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Um, this is a, a 
to, to build a new facilities shop, basically. Um, it's part of the county's long-term plan to shrink our footprint. Um, part of what we're doing now is we, we use the old uh, mechanic shop that's on Hereford Road. Um, we gave up our shop that we had here on, on uh, Melody Lane campus to the library when the library came out of the old high school. And this is just the continuation of that process and trying to get that building started and um, get it built. Thank you. Um, are there any questions? Just um, maybe it was obvious to others and not to me, but <clears throat> when I looked at this, um, I haven't seen in the past where we've had to do um, a different proposal for another part of the project. Is this part of that uh, 2753000 that goes to KE&G? No, no, that, that, that 123 Hundred and twenty three thousand is a separate deal. That's part of the um the utilities. Um part of this was under a different director in facilities when we originally started this and we were looking at doing some of the utility work prior to doing the building, um, which we did not. So it was under a contract originally with K and G and so we're just picking it up again and going forward. So it's good to clarify that. So we're voting for to approve two billion, two point seven million plus the 123,000. That is correct. Okay, so it total those together. All right, any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 The chair votes aye and the motion carries unanimously. Um, the next is item number 14. Thank you, Daryl, thank you. And Chair, I move that we approve change order to contract uh, 2401 SWD 01 previously approved by the board on July the 25th, 2023, to increase the contract amount from $3,181,659.61 to $3,305,120.44 for additional work on excavation and liner material. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, welcome to our your new position. and. And, and this is Jason Fascio. He's our, I forgot what you are now. New Public Works. New Public Works Director. <laughs> Easy. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, basically, I'm here to respectfully request the Board of Supervisors approve a change order to the contract to complete cell five at the Western Regional Landfill. Uh, this would increase the original PO an additional $123,460 for the additional excavation and liner material that was needed to finish it. So why did we need to do more excavation? Uh, we actually, when we were digging cell five, uh, there was a wet area that was left there from the previous year's monsoon. And we had to remove that wet material to put in dry material so it wouldn't sink and tear the liner. I, I think you've mentioned that to us before, and I was just bringing that up so the public would know why why there was a change in this. Sure. We do get so used to things, just cost of things going up, so I think it is important that there was something additional that had to be done to sell five. So thank you for coming in and um, requesting this and for handling that proper proper disposal of our, our many, many, many millions of waste. <laughs> Millions of units of waste. <laughs> so thank you. The throwaway society. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, so anyway, is there any other comments? No further comments. Okay. Um, I call for all those in favor say aye. 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 The chair votes aye and the motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Fascio. So the next item on the agenda is number 15, which we're back in. Leg legislative session is back. Um, they're cranking away up there at the legislature, and so we do have a few items that have been discussed at the County, County Supervisors Association. Um, there are um, some things on the table, but I think we all get emails and we're aware. I'm wondering if Ms. English, who is our Legislative Policy Committee member, would like to say anything? Um, the only thing I want to say is that when you get the information the same way that I get it, even mm -hmm. though I every Friday morning I'm on the uh, meeting. You need to let me know uh, ahead of time if there's issues that need to be brought up. And that's always been the case is that while I may be the mouthpiece, I'm not the decision maker. 
and and that needs to be during this item, during a meeting. Right. I, I, there's no other time we can really bring up our grievances to you, Ms. English. So I I just needed to clarify that. So this it, I guess it was inappropriate that I <laughs> called on you because I should be calling on us. All right, so we'll be prepared from now on for that um, discussion. If there is anything to discuss, do you have any issues with what's the policy going on it? Well, I just talked to our legislators. Yep, very good. And that is also a very important um, activity for us. All right, is there anything else on that item? Okay, hearing none, we're gonna move on to the report by Richard G. Karwachka, our county administrator, and he's gonna talk about recent and pending county matters. Thank you so much. And so the most important thing that is in need right now is poll workers. So we still need poll workers uh, to work the polls on election day, uh, especially in the rural areas and San Simone and McNeil. So if people are listening, if you have friends, please let them know. Uh, you can go visit uh, www.cochise.az.gov backslash elections. Click on the link for poll worker information to get more information and submit an application. The stipends are up to $155 per election worked, and the typical hours are from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. So we're still looking for poll workers. Please pass on that information, and please submit an application. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll go to our regular reports from uh, Summary of Current Events is what it, the title is, a District 1, Supervisor Tom Crosby. Oh, yes, thank you. Okay, District 2. Uh, okay. Thanks. And I am just going to take another minute to say thank you for all the, the, this is especially for the public that's reached out, but thank you for understanding it's, it was a transition a year ago. I thought I had it bad, and uh, but I chose to step up and do more, and my daughters were helping, and now we're to the point where that isn't working as well, and I need to um, be home. Things Things do get better sometimes, and we're still hoping for that, so I'd like to say thank you. And I appreciate everyone's comments today and, and their opinions. This is, a, this is an honor to be the chairman. And I recognize that, that I maybe fell short sometimes, but I did my best, and I want to say thank you. And with that, um, our next meeting is February 6th, which will be a, reg a regular board meeting at 10 a.m. Um, this meeting is adjourned.